Plant friends, if you are looking for planty book recommendations, I've got you covered on today's video. Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. Plant friends, I have read so many good planty books in 2020 uh, for a combination of reasons, some of them being me wanting to continue my education and research, and some of them being that I have needed an escape more than ever and I've needed to feel connected to nature and plants more than ever. Um, and I have found some really great books that I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to break down eight books that I've read in 2020 that have had a really significant impact on me. If you like this type of video, let me know in the comments because I've certainly read more than eight books, but I'm just kind of starting with the creme de la creme of my reading and I was thinking maybe I could break them down in, in different genres. But speaking of genres, this collection of eight books really spans a variety of genres and styles of book. So I really hope that within the eight, there's a little something for everyone to help everyone keep blooming and growing. Okay, book number one, The Overstory by Richard Powers. This book might be the best book I've ever read in my whole life. And it doesn't make any sense because I never read fiction. I'm a huge self-help reader. I'm a huge educational book reader. And this book like captured my heart and spirit and soul in such a way. So Richard Powers, he won the Pulitzer Prize for it. And this came out several years ago. I'm totally late to the game. Um, but there was like a span of a week where like three different people recommended it to me. And so I finally picked it up. It's an investment of a read plant friends, but I can't suggest it enough. It's a fictional book that intertwines five or six different stories of different people who are completely unrelated and they're all about plants. Every person comes from a different background, a different experience, but they're all tied spiritually to plants in some way. And the way that Richard Powers orchestrates this book, the inter the intertwining of the different characters and the deep com commitment and um, connection that all of the characters have, I felt so seen as a reader, like I could not put this book down. And the way that the book is organized is the beginning, the chapters are much longer, and then towards the end, the chapters get shorter and shorter, and the style of the book kind of changes. Um, I would read a chapter a morning. So this was the way I woke up. Um, every morning I read only one chapter, and sometimes you wanna read more, but it was just kind of how I did it. I let myself just read, and that, was successful for the first half of the book, which is the more like traditional form book. And then as the book kind of takes off, I couldn't put the book down. I have never experienced this reading a book before, but I would be in my bed late at night. Billy would be asleep next to me with my cell phone flashlight reading the book because I literally couldn't put it down. So I really like this book. And if you like plants, if you feel connected to nature, especially trees, especially if you have ever seen redwoods before or if you have a curiosity around redwoods, oh my gosh, try this book. I know it's an investment of a read. It's a big book. I am not a reader. I do not read big books like this, but really it's totally worth it. So I hope you try it and enjoy it. Number two, Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude. Unabashed, right? Yeah, Unabashed Gratitude by Ross Gay. I found Ross Gay um, during the Black Lives Matter movement because he wrote this unbelievably beautiful poem about Eric Garner and his time in the horticultural department. If you listened to the episode I did called Growing Together, I read the poem at the end of it. So I was so taken by this poem and I'm, I've never bought a book of poetry before. <laughs> But I was so taken by this poem that I started researching Ross Gay, and he actually is this gardener and poet, beautiful, prolific poet. And he's got a bunch of poems that are all about plants. And so I ordered this book, um, A Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude. It has 20 or more poems in it. And once again, just like the overstory, lately I've been starting every morning with my cup of coffee, my plants, and a poem by Ross Gay. So I just like say, a poem a day by Ross Gay keeps the blues away. <laughs> um, he writes with such whimsy and depth and he makes me like poetry and I'm not a poetry girl. You know, he brings like a smile to my face, the ode to unbuttoning my shirt. And um, I particularly really liked the poem to the mulberry tree. 
Um, and obviously the title poem of the book, Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, had me a little weepy in, with, in my morning cup of coffee. He's so real, but also there's like so much hope in his writing and um, also he's just a gardener and nature and plants show up in his poems in really beautiful ways. So I can't recommend this enough. Moving on to number three, oh, The Nature Fix. This was recommended to me by my teacher um, in my New York Botanical Garden um, horticultural therapy class. This book has been the answer to my prayers because I, in 2020, am starting to realize like how screen addicted our generation and society is and it's really starting to freak me out. And I think my mission um, in this world is to like help people connect to plants because also they need to disconnect from screens and that's like a big mission for Bloom and Grow. And as I like really start to understand this on a deeper level, I start getting more curious about, about the science behind why we feel so connected to plants and why plants do make people happy. And this book is it. So this woman, Florence Williams, she spent two years researching the people plant connection and she meets with all, I mean, all of these studies that I'm reading, she meets with like all of the scientists and breaks down studies and and really um, captures a lot of the struggle of American but I think international um, the international struggle of like go 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 and being stuck with uh, stuck in like a really crazy schedule the biggest thing for me with this book is actually not learning about plants but learning about sound she has a whole chapter on understanding how sounds affect us and how little um, preserved nature sounds there are in the world because streets are going to interfere with sound. So there are only a few places in the States that still you can go and not hear a plane or a um, car or have um, light come in, you know? So that has made me really think about sound differently. And my eyes are like way more open to like what I hear that's artificial and that's natural. And I appreciate the crickets outside a lot more. So highly recommend The Nature Fix. Next up, speaking of The Nature Fix, Forest Bathing. So this was one of the first books I read in the quarantine. I was feeling super disconnected to nature, super anxious. Obviously I was um, quarantining in New York City in like the epicenter of the pandemic. And I was Googling the concept of forest bathing because I noticed that whenever I would come to Fiala Farm, I would go for a walk in the forest with my mom and it was just the most amazing experience. I heard this concept of forest bathing, I started Googling it and I found this book. So it's by Dr. King Lee, who is a forest medicine researcher in Japan. And in Japan, forest bathing or Shinrin Yoku is the practice. It's a medicinal practice that the Japanese culture has been practicing for a while and there are like hospital and government approved forest medicine centers in forests. So anyway, he goes over not only his studies behind, he's taken like subjects and put them through this forest bathing and it like lowers their blood pressure and their stress and their hormones and it increases like your ability to fight cancer. It's crazy. Um, but he also makes really practical ways to do forest bathing even if you're not by a forest. So for me, I've started, we've left the city, I've started walking in the forest every day. But also like he talks about diffusing essential oils and so I've started diffusing um, tree oils in my house. Uh, Hinoki and basically everything he suggests in this book I bought. <laughs> so um, if you're interested in getting outdoors and why it's so good for you, this book was great. I loved it. Okay, book number five. This is a coloring book. It's an adult coloring book and it's called A Girl and Her Plants and it's by my one of my very first plant friends, Aisha Richardson. So she, we met at a Summer Rain Oaks plant swap, I think was the first time we met. She was one of my very first plant friends and um, she's launched her company, Love and Paper New York, and she makes the cutest planty pins and accessories and greeting cards. And in the pandemic, she launched a Kickstarter for her coloring book. And the coloring book is awesome. It's got so much of her in it. She's got a really cool illustration style. But it's all, um, it's different women and their plants and all the illustrations in it are awesome and a really great opportunity to get off your screen and color. So if you're interested, 
I would highly suggest coloring with Aisha. I'm so proud of her. And it's just so fun to see, you know, now that you've been in the plant space for a while, it's fun to see how everyone's blooming and growing. So very proud of Aisha. Next up, Farming While Black by Leah Penniman. This was recommended to me by Cola B. Talkin when she came on the Bloom Girl Radio podcast to talk about historic black plant parents, basically. We had an amazing conversation. She recommended this book. Leah Penniman founded Soul Fire Farm. And this book is all about the black experience being connected and disconnected to cultivating land and farming land. Um, and it's actually a, kind of a book about how to farm land. Um, but for me, it was extremely informative and in my journey to examine my privilege and try and understand um, the black experience more and just open my eyes to more, which I need to do and need to do the work for, this was really helpful and I highly recommend, even if you're not a farmer, just getting the book and reading the intro. Leah Penniman is so smart and writes so interestingly and listening to her say, you know, food deserts can be called a food apartheid. apartheid. Um, that really like struck and has caused me to like really want to examine that and food deserts and, and food injustice and the systemic issue uh, we've got going on in our country. So if you're interested in learning more, check this book out. Two more books and then we're gonna be done. Another plant friend of mine, Danae Horst from Folia Collective launched Houseplants for All in the pandemic. So a lot of influencers and a lot of my plant friends have houseplant care books out on the market. But what I love about this book, Houseplants for All, is it's more of a book about styling and Danae breaks down different environment profiles. If you have a sunny room, a humid room, a dark room, and then she shows you the different plants that you should put in those rooms and how to style them and gives you care advice for those specific rooms. So it's a style of book that I feel like isn't on the market these days and it's super creative. I'm so proud of Danae. Um, and also the cool thing about it, it it's, it's like kind of small. It's a perfect coffee table type book and it's laid out. It's a super easy read. Um, so I think it's really giftable for the holiday season. So check that out. And last but not least, a Family Guide to Terrariums. I'm surprised that I'm recommending this, but I came across this book um, because of a, re a recent episode of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast, Indoor Plant Projects for Kids. And the podcast episode is all about the fact that kids are indoors more than ever, parents are becoming teachers, teachers are having to teach virtually, it's this crazy time, classrooms look different. So how can we set up kids for success by incorporating indoor garden projects with them to learn science and also just like disconnect from screens. It was a great episode if you have a kid that's home virtually learning. But anyway, Patricia Buzo launched this book, A Family Guide to Terrariums, and it's freaking awesome. So if you have a kid, I would suggest checking this out. She not only um, breaks down, I think there's like 15 different terrariums that you can make with kids of like all different sizes and like levels of difficulty, but the beginning of the book like is really interesting. She breaks down all the different components of soil. Um, when she tells you about watering your terrarium, she talks about the water cycle and science. Like it's a really informative book for your kids, but also like for you, like for your plant parentness. So um, check it out if you're interested. So those are my eight books that I have loved and have influenced me. I hope there's something inspiring for you in there and I hope maybe one of them piques your interest. The links are all in the show notes. It's really exciting. I've partnered with bookstore.com. I've become their affiliate. So bookstore.com is a way for you to buy books, not on Amazon, and support local bookshops. So they um, support local bookshops through the sales of the books. It's a really interesting business. I think it's still in its beta, but I have the affiliate links to buy the books through bookstore.com to support local in the show notes. If you're interested in supporting Bloom and Grow, when buying these books. So affiliate links, if you ever hear influencers talk about that, means that when you buy a link, when you click the link in the show notes and you buy the book, a portion of that purchase goes directly to Bloom and Grow to support the show and it's at no cost to you. So it costs you literally nothing to um, support Bloom and Grow as long as you're buying the book. 
But I hope you like these books. I would love to hear what you guys have been reading in the comments. Let me know. Let me know which ones are you're interested in and what books you might recommend me. And if this is like a highly enjoyed episode, I'm happy to make more because I've actually got a whole bookshelf. These two shelves are plants, but the shelves under there are like literally all planty gardening books. So I hope you can get off your screens, get into a book. I can't recommend The Overstory enough. I really fell in love with that book, but I really can't recommend all these books enough. And until next time, plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>